I rebuilt my DeLorean's front suspension, rear suspension, and a brake caliper just in time to get to the DeLorean convention and show in Illinois, over 1,200 miles from here. In total, I drove 2,600 miles in less than a week. How'd it hold up? Let's find out. There were 78 DeLoreans at DCS. It was a mix of daily drivers, show cars, customized cars, and time machines. There were presentations from friends and family of John DeLorean and those who worked at DeLorean Motor Company in the 70s and the 80s, all capped off by a trip to DeLorean Midwest. All told, it was a good show. Four of us from Northeast Region DeLoreans took the trip this year. And just a few days before we left, my wheel bearing failed. I would not have thought a wheel bearing could make a sound like that. It's like I was driving an old mattress, not a DeLorean. This is the same bearing I replaced when I was removing the rotors and didn't aim the hammer very well. Ah. It made it like 50 miles. I'm not sure what went wrong here, but I still had spares, so I swapped one of those in. It only took about an hour and it didn't hold us up at all. We left right on time. The next trick was keeping cool on the trip. DCS was in early August and three of us didn't have working AC. Thankfully, it was only in the 70s, but these cars have small cabins and even smaller windows. One of the guys 3D printed these scoops that fit inside the window. These worked really well. They throw a lot more air at you than the windows just by themselves. And they kept us cool for pretty much the whole trip. Just don't try to take them out while you're driving. We lost one on the highway that way. The scoop was meant to supplement the cabin blower, not replace it. But my blower had an intermittent problem where it would just stop running for no obvious reason. Because of the high current draw, the blower circuit is protected by a 25 amp breaker instead of a fuse. This seems to be right at the edge of what the blower can draw. So I think it was just overheating and cutting off the blower. Then the breaker would reset, blower would work again. It looks like this is commonly updated to a 30 amp breaker, so that's what I did. The only issue I had is that the new breaker accepts ring terminals and the old one uses blade connectors. I didn't have an adapter that would screw onto the ring terminals, so I just cut the connectors off the old wiring and crimped on ring terminals instead. I'm fairly sure this is still in spec for the original wiring, but it did seem to fix the problem. The blower works perfectly and has run just fine for the entire trip. I need to keep my phone charged during the trip. I could have just plugged it into a USB port, but I'm too lazy to plug a cable in all the time, and there's really no good place to lay it down anyway. Instead, I replaced the ashtray with this MagSafe puck holder. It's printed in ASA plastic so that it won't melt in the sun, and has a little bit of a rise around the puck so that the cameras don't get in the way. The cable runs to an accessory switched 15 watt USB-C charger installed behind the seat. Since it's magnetic, the phone stays in place pretty well, as long as you don't slam on the brakes. The ashtray location works well for me because I have a radio with wireless CarPlay so I can have all my maps and music display on that and not have to look at the phone screen all the time. I put a link in the description if you want to print your own version, or if you don't have a 3D printer, I'm thinking of selling these for everyone else. So if that's something you're interested in, let me know in the comments. Before I went to DCS, I'd replaced my shocks with KW coilovers. I'd set the ride height to about where the old shocks were, but by the time we made it to our first stop, the suspension had settled quite a bit. I'm pretty sure my front tires were rubbing against the fenders when I turned the wheel, but I didn't notice any problems while driving. Putting the car up on the lift and lowering it again seemed to reset the height to the higher ride height, but only until the next time I drove it. I fixed it by just raising the coilovers another inch. It still rides low like I want it, but it clears the fenders enough that it won't scrape when I go around a corner. I found it easier to adjust the ride height after loosening the nut on the top of the shock. Doing it this way meant I wasn't fighting against the spring as much while turning the wrench. And this time, I didn't resort to cutting off the nut. A few people commented on my suspension videos that you can put a wrench on top of the shock stem and you can use that to hold the shock in place while you loosen the nuts. You can even buy special sockets specifically for this. Now, I did notice that the top of the shock stem is squared off. In fact, I've used vice grips on it before to hold it while I remove the nuts from the shock. I have no idea why I didn't remember to do that this time. What I didn't notice is that, at least on the KWs, that square is actually a truncated hex. An eight millimeter box wrench fits right on it. The old shocks are a bit rusty and I can't tell if it has a hex cross section or not, but there is a hole on the top for an Allen wrench, which is also so rusted that I can't fit any of my wrenches in there. But an open wrench or vice grips would have worked. And I can't really tell on the front shocks because I cut the stem off. 
The point is, I probably didn't have to cut off any of those nuts. Oh well. At least I know for next time. Which was this time. Thanks to everyone who let me know about this. While I was under here, I noticed that the nuts on the lower link arm adjuster were loose. I'm not sure how that happened, but they were tweaked during the alignment. I snugged them back up towards the looser nut. It should be fine. And while we're talking about things near the wheels, let's talk about the tire pressures. The fronts are supposed to be 23 PSI, but this one was 40. I have no idea how I managed that. And this one was down to only 15 PSI when it should have been 32. I think I have a slow leak here. Looks like it's already getting flat again. I fixed it at a gas station about halfway home and it made the car much more stable on wet roads. I did not expect it to affect the handling as much as it did. Another annoying issue is that the kick down on my automatic transmission wasn't working. It's not a big deal for cruising, but it does make it harder to get up to speed and pass other cars. I've had problems with the switch before and would temporarily work around it by just manually dropping down to second gear until I could fix it, but that wasn't working either. It turns out the throttle cable was way out of adjustment. The car would still shift gears without a problem, but it would go to the next gear too early if you were accelerating hard. I properly adjusted the cable and now the car has more power, stays in lower gears longer when accelerating, and the kick down actually works. Would have been nice to have this on the trip, but I'll take it. A minor issue was that the windshield washers stopped working, again. The wipers themselves worked, which was good because we hit a lot of rain on the way home. I'm glad I got the blower circuit fixed because the humidity fogged up the windows pretty good and I had to run with the defroster on a lot more than I expected to. And because the AC was broken, I was still driving with the windows down in the rain. It wasn't bad at highway speeds where the car would displace enough air to push the rain away from the windows. But once you slowed down to around 30 miles an hour or so, it pretty much soaked the inside of the door panel. There are also a couple of small leaks near the front of the door. I haven't been able to track these down, but they're pretty rare. Maybe a drop every minute or so. It can get a little annoying. I just haven't figured out how I'm going to fix it yet. We made two quick stops after the show. The first was outside Detroit to visit the gravesite of John DeLorean. Due to all the rain and traffic, we got there one minute after they locked the gates. But the groundskeeper took pity on us and let us in to pay our respects. The other stop was at my family's dairy farm in upstate New York. We got there just in time for the cows to come home, but we had to rush out of there pretty quick to stay ahead of the rain. Just two weeks after we got home, we all drove to Maine for a parade. We had 11 DeLoreans in total. That put another 600 miles on the odometer, which is what I'd say if my odometer worked, but you get the idea. Between those two trips, I'd driven somewhere around 3,400 miles, and it was time for an oil change. That's a record for me. While I was in there, I swapped out the air filter. The old one was reusable and could theoretically be cleaned, but at this point it was in pretty bad shape, so I just replaced it. Of course, I ordered the wrong size filter. I managed to get it right on the third try. Oh, and that wheel bearing I replaced? It failed. Again. This time it made more of a grinding noise, which I guess is better than a squealing noise? At least it was good enough to wait until I got home. I swapped it out with another one of my spares, and it seems to be okay for now. I'm starting to run out of spares. And finally, a little cosmetic upgrade. Some stainless steel sill letters for the door. They look pretty nice. While at DCS, I learned that these screws were added by a DeLorean Quality Assurance Center when the car arrived in the US from the factory in Ireland. There are supposed to be clips that hold the sills down, but they don't really work. So, screws. After 40 years, the screws got pretty rusty, so I replaced them with stainless steel screws to complement my new sill letters. Except this one. I can't figure out how to get this one out. Maybe I'll just leave it as a tribute to the pogs at the QACs. Or that's what I'll tell everyone anyway. All told, the trip went really well. We drove more than 35 hours in that week, and I did another eight hours for the parade in Maine. And we really didn't have any problems. Well, one car did have a coolant hose fail on the way to DCS, but that was fixed in half an hour and we were back on the road in no time. There were a few other smaller problems, but nothing that held us up for very long. We came prepared. The next DCS is in 2025, and we're hoping to bring even more cars from the Northeast this time. If we're lucky, the trip will be just as uneventful as this one was. Don't forget to appease the algorithm before you go, and thanks for watching.